Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics, and this is your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. A lot to talk about today. Just going to talk about a lot of different projects that had a little bit of news. Going to dive in there. Also, people buying a double clown punk. We'll look at that and a whole lot more. Let's get right to it. Starting off with a quick market overview. Volumes low again. Not much to say there. Kind of in that range they've been. Blur at 71% market share. In terms of the large cap index, it was down 1%. But don't let that fool you. It wasn't all bad. D-Gods pumping up 11%. Just nothing but up since they kind of did that podcast and along and announced more details about season three, uh, which will commence on August 9th. Mid cap index up a fair bit. Uh, crypto dick butts had a bit of a bounce back. Rumble Kong also strong while on chain monkey was weak. Let's look at that crypto dick butts move. You can see the floor bounce kind of up to about 0.8 ETH range uh, for the season three crypto dick butts. What happened? Not a whole lot, but we just got the reveal for the season four and the season four my general sense, I tweeted about it, my general sense that people don't love them. That's just the sense I get uh, from the feedback on my feed. There have been a couple sales at about 0.2 ETH. There was kind of a sentiment that people would start trying to buy season four, season three, maybe even uh, one and two. Uh, you know, and you got a little bit of a bounce in season, season three. Overall, these fours are now below mint price. So never good to see that. In terms of DGODs, just another rally. I mean, these things just have been really strong, relatively speaking, ever since announcing more details about season three. I wanted to take a look at who the buyers have been, though, as I always like to do. And the top buyer here is the blend address. Uh, some people putting on leverage, 37 uh, new ones have been bought on loan over the past three days. The second biggest buyer is EB7, who you know likes to take bets around events. He's bought eight of them. Now, if you look at the next five, though, Four of those are very big farmers. Uh, you can see based on how many bids they've won on Blur. These are basically everybody who's bought more than one. So these aren't huge buyers, but people buying two to four. Now, I have a few friends who farm D-Gods, and they say that generally speaking, the D-Gods farmers have been kind of an isolated group of people who like and support the project. It seems like now just the biggest farmers kind of in the game are coming to D-Gods as well. So that's uh, probably been putting a little bit of a bid into that into that price right now. Opepin Edition, basically flat, not a whole lot to see there in the price, uh, but we did see that Jack Butcher said that submissions are live where anybody in the public can now submit Opepins that they think should be made as art. Kind of an interesting play there. I mean, obviously, Jack, Jaleel, and the team get full discretion over what actually gets used and sent to the public, but anyone in the public can submit different ideas. They have a lot more to fill. They've only done 10 of the different art types. So it'd be interesting to see how they do that. And if any kind of holders or people in the community come forward and get their art into the Opepins. Nakamigos had a little bit of a rally. Uh, you can see they did a teaser here. Pretty enigmatic, not really sure exactly. You know, they've said that in in the fall, there's more coming. And they said here, fall is coming. And as a result, you got a little bit of a pump from about 0.27 to 0.3 ETH on those. Also want to talk about the grapes, uh, which has just been on fire recently. This project has gone from 0.17, you know, about a month ago to 0.55 right now. So really rallying just a little bit about this project. I think the reason it's rallying and Tyler over Lucky Trader wrote about this said that, you know, holders are going to get access to the grape token. This token likely is some sort of revenue share from mobile games that are in development by a team that is backed that has Animoca as investors. So interesting one there. Uh, nice to see that little rally. Then one last thing. Proof, our very own Grail Pass, number four, is out. It's in the wild. It's trading. The bids are 0.67. The floor price is about 0.8. And we've been seeing trades. The most recent trades I saw were at 0.75 to 0.82 ETH. So relative to the 5 ETH price for the collected pass, there'll be a few more Grails you know, before those passes get turned into Eldars. I think this is actually a pretty, uh, pretty decent result thus far. Obviously, a whole lot more left uh, to see with the art, the 20 art pieces of art that are going to be revealed. In terms of art projects, and just a couple projects did more than 10 ETH of volume. I have DK Editions on here. That's one that I track with this. I'll talk about that with the notable sales, but three memories of Chilin sales, uh, three chromy squiggles. Let's have a quick look. This was the most expensive squiggle sale, 11.25 ETH. Really cool color palette. Just kind of a nice aesthetic uh, chromy squiggle there. Kind of interesting shape. There's a memory of a Chilin, which sold for about 3.7 ETH. A lot selling kind of in that 3.5 to 4 ETH range. So a little bit lower than where we have been. A Vera Molnar piece. This one sold for... 4.6. You can see the N and the T both kind of in that. And then we had a Singularity, which sold for 3 ETH. Singularity uh, has been a project that has been kind of slowly grinding higher. So love to see that. 
second thing to talk about or sixth thing to talk about if you count all those projects I talked about, but Haas and Renga uh, put together an NFT, which minted out yesterday. Going to have a quick look at what that was. Here you can see Haas and Renga collection is sold out. This is the tweet from Renga. For those who don't know, Haas is an F1 team uh, and they've done a partnership both with Renga, but also with OpenSea. If you look at kind of this picture here of the of the sports car, you know, MoneyGram is their their big sponsor, but you also see uh, the OpenSea right here kind of on that sports car, on the F1 car. Uh, I'd love to see that. Here is what the NFTs look like that they have made together, really in that dirty robot look and feel. They have the Netherlands on there. I'll talk about that in a second, but kind of you know, really look very similar to the actual Rengas. Uh, just with a little bit of a sports car driver angle, a little bit about this NFT. There were a thousand. The mint price was 0 0.088 ETH. The current floor for them is 0 0.12 ETH. So buyers have got a little bit of a jump higher. It's traded 70 ETH of volume so far. So doing a fair bit of volume for a 0 0.1 ETH, 0 0 0 0.2 ETH NFT, 5% royalties. And they, this is kind of a utility NFT. Within their within their FAQ, they talk about all the different things this can entitle you to. Chance to win race suits. They call them fire suits. I'm not enough of a race guy. I don't know what a fire suit means, but I assume it's some outfit that drivers wear. Replica helmets you can get. You can get your name on the car. You can get your NFT shown in the garage for Haas. Virtual, virtual meet and greet with people on the Haas team. So cool stuff. Interesting kind of utility for, uh, for an F1 fan at a 0.12 ETH floor. So Kind of cool to see that. In terms of the biggest sales we've had, we had a 1.2 ETH sale, a 0.98, and then a 0.81. I'd say this 0.81 looks the most unique, but this this 0.1 or this 1.2 has a couple of that, those Haas traits uh, in it. In terms of the Netherlands, why does it say the Netherlands on it? I asked Twitter. I think this guy Roy Ox Liu Jitsu had the best response. He said, "I believe the intention is it for is for it to be dynamic." Uh, from their description, it's more than just art. It's dynamic representation of upcoming race locations with each piece holding the potential of undiscovered bonuses, opportunities, and activations. And the Netherlands, I believe August 25th to 27th is the next Grand Prix. So you can see that uh, word on the art here. Fourth thing to talk about, the Sam Spratt Monument game. Sam Spratt has been teasing this for a while. And in my conversations with Sam Spratt, all the way back to all February, March, he said he had something huge coming this summer unlike anything uh, that the space has really seen. And we're starting to get a sniff of what that is. Here is his tweet. The Council of Lucy has chosen their players. Rather than give Skulls of Lucy holders some sort of utility or airdrop, I gave them two responsibilities. The first, to give me a name. So that's the first one. I don't think we know what the second one is yet. Uh, someone they believe in, support, or have been supported by. Awesome stuff. And Sam is saying that all those players have been selected. Now, each skull, remember, there are 50 skulls. The floor price is sitting out there, at least where they've been trading, has been at like the 70 to 90 ETH range. So one of the most valuable NFTs in the game right now. Each person who has one can choose a ticket. Each ticket gets one of the one of 256 editions. There are now of those 256, one has already been sold. And that was sold, uh, I believe it was a Christie's auction. It was bought for about 20 ETH. Uh, so that one has been sold, but there are 255 left to go. Uh, as far as people, you know, he's kind of slowly announcing who has been nominated to get them. And we've seen a lot of the great artists in the space, Ed Balloon, Tijo, uh, Brian Brinkman, Summer Wagner, thus far have all been selected. So congrats to them. And I think we'll just keep getting more and more dribble out or dribble out over the day of who the other ones are. Here is kind of this NFT, not only the NFT, but kind of the emblem he made for player one, PTM. That is the person who bought it in the Christie's auction. And then Brian Brickman, one of the first people chose, said, let the monuments game begin, monument games begin, uh, and tweeted this image. So love to see that. Yeah, Sam Spratt clearly at the very top of the game right now. So very curious to see how this plays out, what it means over time. And also after those 50 players are selected, there'll be about 200 left. And I believe that those will be sold to the public. So we will see how that goes. Last thing to talk about, let's talk about some notable sales. And the first one, you love to see it. Beeple buying a double clown punk. He paid 113.69 ETH for this. I think this was just a case of Beeple figuring out which punk does he like and buying that one. When I say double clown, there are three clown traits. Okay, this one on the right. This is not the one he bought. I'm just putting it there so I can show you what the clown hair looks like. It's that clown hair, kind of one of the funkiest looking traits in the CryptoPunks collection. These are clown eyes and this is a clown nose. So Beeple kind of got that clown nose, clown eyes. Double clown uh, punk uh, with the albino skin tone yeah, and the mohawk. Love to see it. You know, and I think clearly, you know, if you, if you spend time with people, this guy is just someone who is smiling, having fun. He is a joker. So I'm not, you know, I, I didn't guess which one he'd buy, but seeing that he bought this one does not surprise me. He also did his everyday of the punk and 
I don't know. Beeple's just such a fun guy. I, I kind of, I'm a, I'm a fan of everything he does. So love to see this. Uh, very cool every day with that representation of the punk. Would be awesome if you could do that with my punk. I think there's just cool representation of the various pure crypto punks that are out there. Did a really good job with that one. Second sale to talk about this piece. What the font by DK. He sold 50 of these. So this is an addition. Uh, and again, I don't do it justice because Google Drive, you know, just kind of has a hard time with the animations. I did put in a little bit more of what the different pieces in the animation look like. Starts kind of bringing in a character in. Then he turns it into Waldo and about 15 others. Got to see what it's like. Then he bumps it over to the right. Then he does bold. He kind of blows it up. And eventually uh, the piece blows up and, and gets deleted. But it's just fun. You know, everything DK does is a lot of fun. What are the details of this mint that he did? It's an addition of 50.3 E. Uh, was the min price for holders who won the raffle and 0.9 ETH was for open entries who won the raffle. Uh, I believe only 10 spots were given to open entries uh, and 40 spots were given to holders. Right now, the bid is at one ETH floor, is at one ETH. The floor price is 2.25 ETH. So nice little all move for, for anyone who got that uh, and great to see. Yeah, we'll see how that trades over time. Not uh, the only one of one sale I want to talk about today, just because we talked about a lot today. This piece called A Long Day's Evening by King Xerox. Uh, here it says kind of wag me. Here it says GM. This piece sold for 3.5 ETH. I've talked about a lot about King Xerox. I think he's one of the best kind of, one of the best kind of glitch. You know, he's just a satirical artist uh, talking about the space. And I always love to see what he, uh, what he puts forth. That is all from me today. I hope you like the show. If you did, give us a like below. Tell us what you think in the comments. Join our Telegram group. There's a link below. Best way to receive notifications when we launch new shows. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll be back tomorrow and just about every weekday with another show. Have a great day.